In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to everyone joining us at home for Mass, hoping you're all well. I'm offering this Mass for Paul Gosgrove on his 98th birthday. Paul is here with us this evening. I think, is that his daughter's just telling him? I think maybe at the end of Mass we might sing Happy Birthday. Is that okay if we sing Happy Birthday at the end of Mass? Is that okay? Great, okay. Great to be able to celebrate a 98th birthday. With the Apostles' request in today's Gospel to increase their faith, we're asked to be people of real faith, and this faith has power. As we begin our celebration this evening together, we pause to open ourselves to God's presence so that our faith might be increased. Lord Jesus, you ask us to live by faith and to be faithful servants. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us faith to be able to carry out the demands of the gospel. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your death and resurrection, you have shown us the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk, from whose writings the first reading is taken, prophesied around 600 BC, the worst time in ancient Jewish history. The Assyrians had annihilated the northern kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom of Judah was holding out against overwhelming odds. Bad advice and foolish tactics by the kings of the time led to defeat and exile to Babylon in 602. In tonight's first reading, the Lord hears Habakkuk's prayer for the exiled people, but warns him that their fulfilment is going to take a long time, for the people's hearts are far from him. In the second reading, St Paul describes the effects of the laying on of his hands in Christ's name upon his disciple Timothy. The effect is the same as the apostles experienced at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them as tongues of fire. Timothy is a young man of Greek origin from the next generation, yet the effects of the laying on of hands is the same. Today this gesture is used for the sacraments of confirmation, ordination, and the anointing of the sick. A reading from the prophet Habakkuk. 
How long, Lord, am I to cry for help while you will not listen to cry oppression in your ear and you will not save? Why do you set injustice before me? Why do you look on where there is tyranny? Outrage and violence, this is all I see. All is contention and discord flourishes. Then the Lord answered and said, Write the vision down, inscribe it on tablets to be easily read, since this vision is for its own time only, eager for its own fulfillment. It does not deceive. If it comes slowly, wait, for come it will without fail. See how he flags he whose soul is not at rights, but the upright man will live by his faithfulness. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him, giving thanks. With songs, let us hail the Lord. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we, the people, who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I am reminding you to fan into a flame the gift that God gave you when I laid my hands on you. God's gift was not a spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power and love and self-control. So you are never to be ashamed of witnessing to the Lord or ashamed of me for being his prisoner. But with me, bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God. Keep as your pattern the sound teaching you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. You have been trusted to look after something precious. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The word of the Lord. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, were your faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. 
Which of you, with a servant ploughing or minding sheep, would say to him when he returned from the fields, Come and have your meal immediately? Would he not be more likely to say, Get my supper laid, make yourself tidy, and wait on me while I eat and drink? You can eat and drink yourself afterwards. Must he be grateful to the servant for doing what he was told? So with you, when you have done all you have been told to do, say, we are merely servants. We have done no more than our duty. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Trying to make a homily interesting and stimulating is one of the most difficult things that I have to do as a priest. From my vantage point here, I can see all of you for good or ill. I remember vividly in a previous parish a person who used to stand at the back and read the newsletter as soon as I opened my mouth. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that people yawning or reading is demoralising because when you preach you're putting yourself out there. It's hard not to take someone's reactions personally. In a previous parish I succeeded a priest whose homilies were apparently like a comedy sketch. A lot of people liked them, so I felt I was a disappointment. Later I discovered there were people who didn't go to Mass for comedy. One of the things I at least try to do is to keep my homilies up to date. Talking about things that are happening now and relating them to the Scriptures and the Mass shows how the good news is timeless and as relevant as ever. In using contemporary things to explain those that are eternal, as we hear in today's Gospel, I'm following a path that Jesus set. If, unlike me, you're a gardener, you might already know that a mustard seed is about one to two millimetres in diameter. While mustard seeds might not be familiar to us, they were to Jesus' hearers, and so would have provided a vivid image of what the Kingdom of God would be like. The challenge from, today, from Jesus in tonight's Gospel is a strong one. Jesus says tonight that we'd be capable of all sorts of remarkable feats if our faith was the size of a mustard seed. This might make us feel bad that our faith isn't like that, or it might make us passive, expecting such faith to be simply given to us. But it's actually meant to spur us on. While it's true that faith is a gift, it's also something that needs to be nurtured. A life of faith isn't an easy option, which probably explains why so many people aren't up to it. Like the mustard seed in the Gospel, faith needs the right conditions and nutrition to grow. And that doesn't just happen by accident. Our faith needs to be nurtured by how we live our lives. We can't expect to be sustained by our belief if we ignore it in everyday life or if it's confined to Sunday Mass. In the first reading, Habakkuk complains to the Lord about the state of the world around him and the Lord's reply is to be patient. The duty that the Lord asks of us today is to stand firm in our faith even when things might seem difficult. Because if we do, then we can be confident that the power of faith spoken by Jesus in the Gospel tonight will be ours. Please stand. We profess our faith in the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make our needs known to our faithful God, confident he hears our prayers. That all members of the church may express their faith through the service of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us that all the peoples of the world may be led to salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the people of Ukraine may know comfort and consolation in their hour of need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us that those of little faith may increase it through their loving service of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That each of us may model great faith by performing our daily tasks well. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. Gracious God, you give us strength and faith to be diligent disciples. Hear these our prayers that one day we might live with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Whilst the gifts of bread and wine are prepared, we'll sing hymn number 133, the first two verses. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can't do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I do. Father, I place Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and entrusted and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Malcolm, our Bishop, 
his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the place of sin and the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the place of sin and the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall we sing happy birthday to Paul? Happy birthday to you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Final hymn, we'll sing the first two verses of 582, Walk with me, O my Lord. Walk with me, O my Lord. 